Welcome to St. Margaret Parish. Beginning Monday, September 14, and each Monday through November 9, we will provide the virtual Miraculous Medal Novena on our parish YouTube channel at 7 p.m. Do you know someone who is interested in learning about the Catholic faith and possibly joining the Catholic Church? RCIA will resume with virtual meetings on Monday, September 21. Call the parish office or see the bulletin for more information. September is National Recovery Month. Please keep those suffering with addiction in your prayers. We want to thank each of you for continuing to send in your weekly contributions. These funds help us keep the facilities running and our employees working. All of this helps us to continue to serve the Lord together. And please remember the poor. They are always with us. We are still in need of non-perishable food items and especially in need of casseroles. Thank you for your kind attention. Today, let's begin our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters of Paris, so let's celebrate this Eucharist. Let's call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May a mighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us bow our heads and pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love for you and our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. The Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns in unity the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. 
For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to, Glory you, to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at the dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them on the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going back about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again about noon, and around three o'clock he did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last ones have worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Some of Jesus' parables are referred to as hard parables or difficult because the interpretation of them can be difficult because there are usually a number of possibilities. The church in its wisdom today gives us the first reading from the Old Testament from Isaiah as sort of an opening up to take us into the meaning of the parable in Matthew's gospel. In it, the God who is always near us says, my thoughts are not your thoughts and your ways are not my ways. In other words, what we have here is a God doing unexpected things contrary to the worldly standards. As we consider today's parable, looking at the landowner and the workers in the vineyard, it's crucial 
to keep everything in context, okay? Content in context. Today we read from Matthew 20, starting with the first verse going through uh, 1 to 16a. But to step back a little bit, go to the last part of chapter 19. We back up a little bit because this sets the stage for the parable that Jesus is telling his disciples. It includes the parable about the uh, young rich man who goes away with his head down because he has many possessions and is not willing to give them up. And Jesus talks about how difficult it is for the rich to get into heaven. And the disciples say, well, who then can get in? And he says, well, with humans it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. And then uh, Peter comes in with a rather interesting statement to Jesus. Peter says, we have given up everything to follow you. What will there be for us? And Jesus says, in the new age, everything will come to pass. The rewards will be given. And he says that people who have given up possessions, family, so forth, for his namesake, will receive a hundredfold more back, and they will inherit eternal life. But then he says at the very end, but many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. This part of the gospel is a warning, not to get mixed up thinking that rewards are somehow earned and can be calculated ahead of time. Notice how the parable was framed. At the end of chapter 19, it says that the first will be last and the last will be first. This introduces the parable. And at the end of the parable, it says, then the first will be last and the last will be first. It reverses around, okay? So in between, we have a very, very interesting situation here. The parable is really sort of metaphor that is getting us or provoking us, you might say, to think about what life is like in the kingdom of heaven. Because it, the parable starts off, the landowner who went out at dawn says, this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. To really understand the story, think about it. We have to ask ourselves, who was happy and who was unhappy? The happy ones were certainly the ones who came in last because they received a full day's pay, an unexpected reward. Who was unhappy? Well, the first who were hired in the morning. Now, were they unhappy because they made a bad bargain? Bargain was a good bargain. They got exactly what was the daily wage, a denarius at this time, which was standard good wages for the work that they were doing. Were they angry because the bargain wasn't kept? Ah, it was kept to the very letter. No, uh, actually, uh, at the end of the day, something occurred to them that they didn't think of at the very beginning when they went into this contract with the landowner. And that is, they thought that they should deserve more comparing themselves to the others who came later. The grumbling workers then, if you take a look at their, how should we say in colloquial terms, being ticked off at the landowner, it wasn't a matter of economics. It was a matter of, you made them equal to us. Aha, maybe we've got something here. Maybe this is the key to one of the meanings, one of the possible meanings of this parable. It could be as simple as, the first and the last shall be equal. In the parable, it's not about earned rewards. It's about God's gracious love and his generosity that staggers the human imagination. Simply put, I think the parable tells us all who respond to Jesus' call, no matter the time, whether they're first, last, or somewhere in between, and they live according to the teachings of the good Lord, all will be equal in inheriting the benefits of the kingdom, which is a pure and simple gift of a gracious and loving God. Amen. Let's now stand for our renewal of our baptismal promises and our response is I do. Do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died and was buried, rose from the dead, is now see the right hand of the Father? 
to believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. God, all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgiven all our sins. May he keep his faith to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. We know that God is near to all who call upon him. In trust, let us turn to God with our prayers and needs as we make our response. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and deacons, grant them courage and conviction as they preach the good news. We pray to the Lord. Lord, yeah. hear our prayer. For world leaders and those in positions of authority, instill in them a spirit of compassion and generosity toward the most vulnerable members of our communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents, catechists, and all entrusted with passing on the faith, bless them and through their ministry, increase opportunities for them to grow in knowledge and love of our Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of creation, give us the eyes to see your goodness in the natural world. Help us to be good caretakers of the earth and of all your creatures. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, and the lonely, heal them in mind, body, and spirit. Give us a desire to reach out to them in love and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, including Joseph Lutz, may they experience healing and forgiveness for their sins, and may meet Jesus our Savior as comforter and friend. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the parishioners of St. Margaret Parish, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those needs which we hold within the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and compassion, listen to the prayers of your people and make us more generous stewards of the gifts you have given us. And we ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable. God, the Father Almighty, may the Lord this is the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rise from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by his sending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of the angels and saints, we sing a hymn of your praise as within we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed, and entered willing to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which we give given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the morning of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may gather to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, we and our bishop and all here present. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostle and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grace you grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins for the faith of your church, and grace you grant our peace and unity according to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. And now let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Peace and all good to you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed bless are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. She entered my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come possess it with redemp your redemption, both the mystery and the manner of your life, through Christ our Lord. And from the fury of the virus, deliver us, O Lord. Loving God, we pray for all those who are suffering because of the coronavirus. May they know your healing power. When we are afraid for ourselves and our loved ones, give us strength and courage. When we feel alone and isolated, reassure us with a sense of your presence. Give wisdom to those in authority, and may our community work together for the good of all. We give thanks for those who care for others and ask you to bless them in all that they do. We ask this in the name of Jesus, healer and physician. Amen. Amen. This time we have uh, one speaker who would like to talk to us. Jamie, who's part of the pastoral planning committee, is going to say a few things, what's happening in, the, in our parish. Thank you, Father, and hello to all my fellow parishioners. My name is Jamie Riley, and like all of you, I'm a parishioner of St. Margaret's Church. So as a member of the church, I have something in common with you. All of you are members of the church, too. With that in mind, I speak to you, my fellow parishioners, as brothers and sisters in Christ. So why am I here? Well, you probably received via email recently a survey that went out. And I wanted to provide more context around that. I want to talk about why it was sent and what it was for. I'm a member of the pastoral planning team, so what is that? Well, the pastoral planning team encompasses 11 members of the parish community and parish staff who are seeking to advance our mission. And I'm curious if you know what our mission statement is. If you're like me, you might not even be aware of our mission statement, and so you are not alone. I did not know it either at the time. But we do have one, and it is seeking a world transformed and unified in Christ. These are powerful words, right? So let me say it again. Seeking a world transformed and unified in Christ. The pastoral planning team wants to do something with that. And so we are looking at how we as a parish family are called to share in that mission and ministry, the ministry that Jesus gave us. In other words, we want to evaluate how are we doing as a church in our ministry and how can we improve. And this pastoral planning team has been working over several months now to focus on some key areas. And now we have reached a time point where we need your feedback. And that brings me to who we are as the church. We're not just this building, right? When I was asked to speak to you, in fact, today, I was drawn to the familiar teachings in the Word from St. Paul, and he tells us that we are all a part of the body of Christ. We were baptized into the body via the Spirit, and we are called to work together within the body of Christ. And two, Paul tells us we have all been given unique gifts in just the right way. What he is really saying is that everyone is needed. All of us in the church are needed to advance our mission. And so we're seeking your feedback. I share these teachings of St. Paul as a guidepost with you because although I said there are 11 of us on the pastoral planning team, we are humbly only a small, small portion of the full parish. So we need you. We need to hear from all of you and we need your support. As I said, you are the church. And that's what St. Paul tells us and that's what God tells us. And so we are prayerfully asking that you as members of the church help us on this journey. We have a simple ask, and that is for you to participate in a series of short surveys to share your opinion on five key areas. And these will be emailed out. As I mentioned, one was just recently emailed out to you. And don't worry if you deleted it by accident. There is access to it on the website, and there will also be information in the parish bulletin. So the five key areas that we feel we need to focus on and we need your feedback on are community and welcome, catechesis, relevance of faith in daily life, 
youth, young adults, and young families, and COVID-19, the impact on the faith journey. So I've already made the case that your feedback is so important, and let me emphasize two things. The surveys are brief and anonymous. But most importantly, it's your opportunity to give us the feedback we need. We hope to also gather feedback in other ways via focus group interviews one-on-one, -on -one. so there will be an opportunity to provide your contact information and share more direct feedback and be more involved if you feel the call to do that. And remember St. Paul's teaching about those different gifts. Each of us has something to offer, and I truly believe some of you might already be aware of what gifts you may have to help in those five areas. Once the feedback is received, we can discern further the approaches we should collectively take as a church to walk alongside that mission statement. I know a personal driver for me is I want my three sons to feel a deep connection to the church community, and I know that first starts with me. So in summary, I'm representing the pastoral planning team. We seek your feedback in either an anonymous or more active way, that's if you feel called to do so. But either way, you are an important part of Christ Church, and we want to hear from you. We ask that you please prayerfully dedicate the time to answering the surveys. It will not take you long. And be an encourager. Ask your spouse. Ask your parents. Did they take the survey? If you have a young adult child at home or at college, send it to them. We need this young generation's input, input now more than ever. So again, please be an encourager, take the survey, and we thank you in advance for your information, your feedback, and God bless you. I want to thank Jamie and the pastoral team. They've been working over the, the months that we were shut down, and they still do all the Zoom meetings and things like that. Michelle uh, Sullivan, uh, Father Nick Demas involved, and other people involved. And they stayed, they stayed together even when we were shut down. So I want to thank you for all their work. And I hope you can respond uh, to the survey. So the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is now over. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.